<laughs> this is Jackie and I'm here with LOM day three of Firefly. How are you holding up so far? I am doing well. I just got off stage, so I'm feeling really alive right now. <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of bands that I've interviewed have just done the same thing. They play and then they come talk to me. I'm a lucky person. Yes. Uh, and so they're usually full of adrenaline. <laughs> Describe what that feeling was like to play today. So it's crazy because right before I go on stage, I get really quiet and very introverted. And I actually came up with this phrase, I'm going invisible for people on my team because I didn't want anyone to be upset that I'm just like want to be left alone. So, and I would get severe anxiety before going on stage where I would be vomiting. And oh. so I, I had to go invisible and it was like, just let me go through what I need to go through. So today I was feeling great though, but still I just, you know, I like to be alone and just kind of quiet. And then you go on stage and just like let it all out and it's crazy. And and then getting off stage, it's, oh yes, now I can have a big meal and just chill. So that's why I love talking to you after oh, the set. That sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, well, it's good that you can recognize the process that you need to, I think. Yeah, I'll... it took me a while actually. And I've talked to a lot of other artists about this and, you know, kind of helped guide them as well because it's okay to say, you know, I need to be alone before, you know, whatever it takes to get on stage, whatever you need to do, I think that's, that's, you know, a valid thing. And, and even just in life, it's so important to, you know, know your boundaries, know your limits, know, you know, what makes you comfortable. And so, yeah. I feel like we learned a lot about ourselves in the past 18 months or so. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> How did you spend your time in quarantine? And did you feel a pressure to be creative or was it something that just kind of happened? So I was in the middle of my headlining tour. It was my baby and I only got to do about nine shows and it was, I think, close to 30. And so I was devastated. I went to my meet and greet and walked out and my tour manager was like, tonight's the last show. It was like that quick. And then I was on a plane the next day. And so I got home and I was just like, I don't want anything to do with music. This is so heartbreaking. And there was just so much confusion. We didn't know when it would come back, but luckily, about a week in after I baked everything I could bake and watched like every show I could watch. <laughs> I was like, okay, I felt inspired and I ended up making more music than I've ever made in my entire life. And I produced a whole album in my bedroom completely alone in isolation. So, you know, it was like, I wouldn't have had the time to do that. It's like the one thing we never have enough of is time. And the one thing we kind of had through this whole thing was a lot of time on our hands. So I created a lot of music. <laughs> Awesome. So you previously released uh, Volume 2, Journey to the Center of Myself. Um, what do you hope to achieve with this four-part series? So with this four-part series, I hope to, you know, guide through this journey. And it's interesting because I actually had the title before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, I made so much music that I decided to put it into four volumes. And the last volume is the album that I produced alone and so it's it's just weird how it all came together because that really is truly the center of me like yeah. it was just me alone it reminded me a lot of kind of creating before i had ever put out music where there's just total freedom and you're not thinking about you know numbers or anything you're just creating so that was, that was kind of the beautiful thing about it Excellent. Um, your single go through it how does it sort of fit the vibe of volume two so volume two it's um, it's really this sort of dream state and 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 explaining it. You know, sometimes it's okay to talk about real things. You know, I'm a huge advocate for mental health because I've struggled since I was very young. And sometimes it's it's nice to have it, you know, explained in a different way. That's not necessarily a sad song, but an inspiring song or a song that's like gonna get you up and it's like, okay, this person's also going through this. You know, so that one that one's dreamy. And then I'm so excited for Volume Three because that one is the color red and it's I tell stories that I've never told before so I'm so excited for volume three yeah. <laughs> um, so how has, has your sound evolved since uh, like your early stuff like Xanax and things like that yeah I, Xanax sounds so lo-fi and um, that was the first song I ever wrote about my struggles with anxiety and that was kind of the song that brought a lot of people into my life that I've you know now become really close with because for so long I felt completely alone and now I have this community of, you know, amazing people who go through also what I go through. And so, I mean, it's evolved. I have evolved as a human being and just naturally that's, you know, evolves my music making and the process, everything. My confidence is such a huge thing and that's, you know, it's like, it's inevitable for everything to evolve, which is really cool. Um, you've collaborated with a ton of people, Flux 
pavilion, black bear, just a ton of other, yeah. it, it would be a very long list if I, <laughs> if I listed all out. Um, how have you benefited from those collaborations? You can always benefit from, you know, of course, when you collaborate with somebody, you know, something as silly as streams, you, you all get to sort of benefit from each other's fans. And then, you know, uh, there's been so many times where I've toured with friends and um, Black Bear, for instance, you know, we did a long tour and we became super, super close. And so many, you know, new listeners of my music were from that. And so that's kind of the benefit of it. But beyond any of that, I would say just the human connection is really, really fun and, and awesome. And very special because then you come to these festivals and you're like hey what's up oh my gosh you know you have friends you <laughs> <Yeah>. know <laughs> uh, there are also a ton of female djs that are really yeah. coming to the forefront who do you enjoy listening to uh, well one of my best friends in the whole world is alice in wonderland and so i love her we just did red rocks actually and she's such a huge inspiration i did my first dj set last night actually <laughs> That's wild. First that is time. wild. <laughs> nice. And she was the last person I texted before going. I was like, I need your blessing. <laughs> what kind of words of wisdom did she have for you? She, would, she sent a picture like this and Aww. was like, I love you. <laughs> and that was all I needed. See, sometimes, yeah. you know, fr friends, when they can't be there, yeah. they're there for you. I, so you've also worked, and you mentioned uh, earlier, with some a cause that is really important to you, yeah. which is mental health awareness. Yeah. September is men Mental Health Awareness Month. When I'm not anxious, I don't talk that fast. <laughs> Important cause. Um, tell me about the Brain Dead EP and why you wanted to focus on proceeds going to that important cause. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I talk the talk and I also wanted to walk the walk. And, you know, um, it was just, it was a project that was so near and dear to my heart. And, you know, it was just, I knew that I, in my gut that I had to donate. I actually went to a gala in New York. I happened to be on the Black Bear tour, actually. We had a few days off in New York. I stayed in the city and Jed Foundation, um, we had been talking. They're like, we actually have a gala tonight. And I was like, I'll be there. <laughs> and I was moved to tears. And, you know, that was really inspiring. I was like, I, you know, I want to do more. I'm always like, what can I do more? Because, you know, people come to me and say, your music has saved me. And that's, you know, the greatest gift in the world. But I, me, I'm just like, I want to do more and more and more. So, so yeah, I just, you know, I wanted to do more. And it sounds like mental health is a, a specific cause that's like near and dear to your heart. So that's great. Very much so. I have struggled severely. Um, so, and when I speak about an anxiety and panic and dissociation, I don't use those words lightly. It's, you know, it's a very, very serious thing. And I've had people on my crew see me go through this and, and be like, wow, I had no idea. Cause I can, you know, I'm, I'm normal. I'm fine. I'm, I'm we're, a human being. we're good at masking when we yeah, need exactly, to, right? but you never know what somebody's going through. And, um, so it's, you know, it's, to be able to be a voice and also just be able to show such a raw side so that people actually know what it is because people do talk about it but you know I want to do it in a very real and honest way so people know it you know it's it's not cool it's not beautiful it's like very horrible so yeah I've you know I feel honored that I've been able to show people kind of that real side of it yeah, we're, we're a little messy but I think that it, that's good that you use your platform yeah. to, to share things <laughs> like that speaking of platforms I you recently played Lollapalooza yeah and hard summer fest. Yeah. So lots of outdoor spaces. Do you prefer the outdoor venues or a more like intimate club? So they're very different. Festivals are so fun. The energy is always really incredible at festivals. Lollapalooza was amazing. It was packed out and it was about 6 p.m. So it was still light out, but it's still the energy was just, you can't beat the energy of festivals. But then also there's something about playing in a dark club. My show is very visual there's a lot of lights the visuals are a huge component of the show so i love playing in the dark but you can't beat a festival <laughs> <laughs> i won't make you choose though i won't make you choose um how did you craft your set list for firefly i wanted to keep it very um fun the whole time but also you know take people on a journey so the beginning starts really high energy and then it goes to this really trippy kind of um I'm trying to think of a psychedelic kind of vibe and then the end gets really, really hard and then the finale is a song called Fuck Your Money and um, and everybody always sings that one, so it's really fun. Excellent. What's up next for you after Firefly? So I am done with shows for right now for the rest of the year, I think. Um, I'm sure things will come up, but I'm just releasing more music. Volume 3 of Journey to the Center of Myself is coming out and I am 
so excited. Okay, well, we're excited for you. <laughs> Get excited you. to hear more music from LOM. This is Jackie. Thanks to In the Key of Change and Chorus FM. Thank you. All right. Can I grab a few pictures?